Good morning guys, so I've got log burner on and a cup of tea made, but honestly getting up in the morning is painful. Um, we're definitely experiencing a particularly cold winter this year and getting out of bed to get that fire on is not easy at all. It really isn't. The, the air is like cold water on your skin. It's horrible. That basically means I need to get a diesel heater installed. So I've bought one of those kits on eBay. It was about 96 quid. It's just one of those cheap Chinese ones, but they do a bloody good job. It's a five kilowatt one, so it'll heat the space no problem at all. So without further ado, we'll get stuck in and get this thing installed. So I've just taken everything out from under the bed and put it on the bed because I think I'm going to be installing the diesel heater somewhere in here. Um, just to show you how cold it is right now, that is ice on the inside of the van. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned. I've got damp showing up here and here. It's one of the few things I didn't build is covering the wheel arch there. I suspect what it probably was, was all the stuff that I've had piled in here has been against the wall and then it's allowed condensation to form. There'll also be condensation forming on that. I can feel that stamp. Well, I'm not too worried because when I install the diesel heater, I'm actually going to have a splitter on its outlet so that some of the heat goes into the van and then some of it's going to come under the bed into this garage space to help dry out some more. One of the first steps is actually going underneath the vehicle to find out where you can feed out the exhaust and the air inlet. But first of all, I'll show you what you get in the box. So that's the 15 litre diesel tank you get. That's the exhaust muffler. That's the plate that the exhaust and the air inlet and the fuel line all feed through. So that actually goes on the floor. And then you get the box of all the kind of accessory stuff you need. So there's all the fixtures and clamps and stuff like that. You've got all your ducting. Pretty sure that's the tube for the air intake. It'll stretch out a bit, but I know that in my last van, I replaced this for something far better because this is the cheapest, crappest thing you can possibly use. These are the tubes that the hot air will go through. These are okay to be like that, but but with the smaller one being outside of the van and rattling around and being exposed to the elements, um, it's much better to get something a bit more durable than this. It's basically just a bit of tin foil, really. You get the fuel lines, one to go to the pump, one to come from the pump. That's the air filter intake wiring harness. Luckily this diesel heater kit comes with a splitter so that allows you to put heat into two areas of the van. Not all of them come with that splitter so do check. And then these go on the end of that ducting and they actually twist. I can't really do it one handed but that then lets you direct the air more. Then you've got the exhaust and then you've got the little diesel pump which is actually going to pump the diesel into the diesel heater. And then of course you have the diesel heater itself and its control panel. There's a little remote as well. Um, which is brilliant because you can just have this beside your bed, hit that button and you'll have a nice warm van. So we need to find two fitting places. We need a place to fit the tank that's going to hold all the diesel and we need to find a place to fit the diesel heater. And of course the diesel heater needs to feed the exhaust and the air inlet through the floor of the van. So for my build I think the best place for the diesel heater is going to be there. So in order to make sure that that is feasible I need to measure from let's say the back bumper to where I want the hole in the floor to be then I need to go under the van, do the same measurement and make sure it's not going to hit a structural beam or a brake pipe or, you know, just any sort of mechanical stuff. I need to make sure it's just a nice clean bit of floor that I can go straight through. Measuring it under here is fine. It takes me between those two structural beams, but it's this beam that's the problem. If you look, that beam there is perfectly in line with that, which means I'd have to pull it over to like there, which is a horrendous use of space. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board. I think it's most likely that what I'm probably going to have to do is put it under the bench, which is that section behind the batteries. So as you can see, the bench space is just full of storage at the moment. It's got loads of tools in it. But the bench is married up with the edge of the door, which helps me figure out what's underneath. So if I'm looking down here, here's the edge of the door, and I'm running underneath. And right at the edge of the door is this panel, which helps a lot. And that's a nice empty space there, but that's going to be too small. But there is one here, which might work just perfectly, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is empty all that space, put the diesel heater where I think it would fit and sit, and then measure up to see how that's all going to fit together. I've emptied that space, pulled the carpet back. So this is where I think the diesel heater is going to go. So I just took the measurement and that comes through directly onto the suspension arm mount. So that's not going to work either. It's getting a bit tricky now. Right, it's definitely not my favorite choice, but it's gonna to have to sit about there somewhere. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is actually go under the van, look at the space that's got the nice clear open space with nothing around it, and I'm gonna drill a pilot hole through the floor up and see where it comes out. And that is gonna determine where the diesel heater sits. 
I'm going to do some measurements to try and get the diesel heater at least semi close to that back wall because obviously I don't want it all the way in the middle here um, but it does need a little space because it gets warm and then I'll have to cut away a section of the floor this is the most tricky bit by the way once you've got the diesel here itself in place it, it really is quite easy it's just figuring out where you're going to position the bloody thing so I've just drilled up through the floor and that's where it's came out um, I know that I have tons of space around here so you can actually use this as a template now so what I'm going to do now is draw around this with a sharpie so I can see how it's all going to sit and then I'm going to cut away some of the flooring to expose the wood and then I'll be using the big circular drill piece to drill holes in the floor Basically this plate is going to get screwed into the floor and that's how the diesel heater gets attached to the floor. So the reason I've drawn around all this is because what we're going to have to do is cut a hole in the floor to accommodate all of this. So I'm just crudely drawing it, something like that. So now what I need to do is cut away this shape. I'm going to have to look at what tools I've got. I do have one of these. But I think what I'm going to do is do four holes to make up that square. It's going to be a bit ugly but at the end of the day it sits underneath this plate um, so it's not really going to matter you're not going to see anything underneath there and then on the diesel here itself it has this rubber seal so when you bolt it all down this all gets pinched in and it doesn't let any air flow up because obviously you don't want any exhaust fumes coming up through the floor of your van so i'm going to go ahead and make a, a butcher's job of this at least through the plywood and then i can dig out the insulation so i can see the floor of the van and see what i'm working with So I use the chisel just to take some of those edges off. It's a bit more square now. Again, it's not beautiful, but it's going to do just fine. As you'd expect, those reflectics under there, which I've cut away, and now I've found the insulation. I'm just going to cut away this square of insulation. Hopefully that's just going to pop out. Right. <laughs> I didn't do the floor on my van, but I would always recommend you use thicker insulation than that. That's not going to do a whole lot. There's the pilot hole that I made. I know that there's loads of space in this direction and you'll notice that the holes also go in that direction. So I'm kind of working from the pilot hole back. So if I just put the panel on to demonstrate again, what's going to happen is the diesel here is going to be bolted through these four holes. So these four holes here don't actually need to go through the floor of the van. Assuming these bolts aren't too long, but looking at the distance there, uh, I should be able to get those nuts on fine. So what I'll actually be doing is bolting this plate onto this before installing it in here but what i do need to do is these two holes and this fuel line hole i need to cut into the bottom of this uh, ideally you would want this to be flat rather than uh, corrugated like this but i'm just gonna have to work with what i've got so i'm gonna be using this i'll use something to mark these two holes down there plus that one luckily this circular saw blade when i cut a hole is actually going to be big enough to accommodate for the fuel line anyway. So instead of actually drawing the holes, I'm just going to use my drill to line up with the middle of the circle. So I'm happy just to punch a hole in the middle and I'll work with that. First pilot hole is almost exactly in the middle of that second hole. So I'm going to take that out of the way now and pilot hole. Now with a circular saw blade. I'm a little bit nervous about this because it's not cutting onto flat surface but we're just gonna have to take it nice and easy. I think the key here is a really high speed, but very gently letting it touch the metal. If you go slowly, it's gonna bite and the drill's gonna kick. Get it in place, get the speed nice and high and just very gently lower onto the metal. It's doing a really good job actually. We're almost through on that first hole. There we go, hole number one. So now I'm gonna use this other pilot hole uh, and get the second one in. There we have it, two holes. So if you're following this as a tutorial, that's it. You're, you're through the worst stage. If I could get a jigsaw, I would straighten them up. It doesn't really matter. What I will do is quickly get a file and file those edges and paint them so that they're not gonna rust. So the manual was useless, but I found a diagram online. I think they're all very much the same if you get these Chinese diesel gears. So the way that these work, they pull cold air in through here. It's then used to ignite the diesel and then the exhaust comes out here. The device gets hot, pulls cold air through here from within the van and then pumps hot air out of there. The connector that sits next to the fuel intake, that's actually the air intake and this one's the exhaust. Really important you get them the right way around. First things first, I'm going to get this plate on and get it bolted on. So we need to attach 
air intake, exhaust, fuel line. Here's the fuel line. Uh, the fuel line gets these little clips that you just squeeze. Oh my God, my fingers are cold. <laughs> um, feed that in, push it onto that and then pull it down so it pinches on it. And then you've got these clips um, and they're gonna be used to tighten on the exhaust on this one and the air intake on this one. This is your air intake. I have already attached the filter on the end, which is this thing they would get in the box. And I've used one of the clips and tightened it up on the end like that. Um, I've done that because I know that this should fit through the hole. <laughs> if it doesn't, I'm gonna to have to take it off. Whereas the muffler on the exhaust is not gonna fit through the hole. So let's get these three parts attached on and then fed through the floor, this screwed onto the floor and then onto the next step. So there's the fuel line connected, got that little clip on it and I've put it at the widest point of that inlet. Got the, got the air intake and the exhaust all fully attached. Now all I'm going to have to do is group them all together like that and feed them to the floor. So the exhaust you should always kind of point towards the edge of the van uh, so that the exhaust fumes kind of flow out and away rather than just gathering underneath the chassis. So I'm gonna put a bit of a bend in it so that it starts going that way. The intake will go somewhere over there, as far away from the exhaust as you can get. Right, I'm just gonna use these self-tapping um, screws, although they've got hexagon like nut heads on them, which is kind of annoying, but four corners, screw that in, and then I'll meet you under the van where I'm gonna tie everything up. Right, this isn't gonna be easy to film, but I'm gonna do my best. The exhaust needs to go towards the side of the van so the exhaust fumes go out. The air intake needs to go as far away from the exhaust as possible without getting in the way of anything. Like there's handbrake cables here and stuff. For the air intake, all I'm gonna do is strap it up against this uh, bit of the chassis here. The fuel line, I'm just gonna cable tie up and run to the back of the van. And then I'm gonna find a way to feed it up. The exhaust, I'm gonna bend this into position and then put the muffler on it comes with one of those clips just like we use to attach it to the actual diesel heater and then it also has a couple of these little brackets that you can use to attach it to the chassis to hold it in place it is quite stiff it does kind of stay where it wants to stay for me it looks like i'm going to be attaching it to this part of the chassis um, which is basically where the muffler is going to be so I'm not actually going to need to attach it anyway here. I don't think there's a right way and a wrong way with this. So I want to get one of these little ringlet attachment things, get it on the end there, get the muffler on, and then remember that I forgot to bring the screwdriver under the van. So I'll be back in a second. Word of advice, if you're going to install a diesel heater, do it in the autumn or the summer. Don't do it in the middle of winter when you realise you should have already had one, because it is painful. My hands are freezing right now. You get this little L bracket with it. And if you notice, indented semicircle space, which is exactly for holding that. I'm going to attach it to the muffler and then I'm going to screw it into that part of the bodywork there. Getting a bit fed up of climbing in and out from underneath this van and it is freezing. So I'm just going to get that attached. Um, you don't need to see me doing that. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then we'll move on to the next bit. So I've just done the same thing with the air intake. I've used the little clips that you get with it and the self-tapping screws tapped into the chassis in two locations so it's held all over there. If I zoom out you've got your air intake and your exhaust going in completely different directions. Now I need to run this along and cable tie it in a few locations. Luckily there's loads of little places it'll easily attach to but what I'm probably going to do first is go into the van and find out where I'm going to feed it in to get to the fuel tank that came with the diesel kit. So you can in fact actually just tap these diesel heaters into your vehicle's fuel tank. It's not a bad idea because then you don't have to sacrifice space for another fuel tank. I'm not 100% keen on doing that, um, but if you were to do it, I'd make sure you leave a good amount in the bottom so that you never use up all your fuel in your tank. But for me, my fuel tank's gonna sit there. So within the tank itself, you get a little bag of attachments. The next step is we need to install the fuel tank, the fuel filter, and the fuel pump. But before that, I'm gonna try and get the fuel line fed up into the van. I'm hoping to bring that fuel line up somewhere along here. So I'm gonna have a measurement or two and see what's underneath the van and see if there's a nice empty space for me to drill another hole. Looks like there's loads. If you see there, 
that's the air filter and there's the fuel line that needs to be running in loads of empty space here loads of empty space here so i'm going to get under there drill a pilot hole and then use a much bigger drill bit that's going to be big enough to allow the thickness of that fuel line to feed up so there's the hole that i've just drilled that goes through to the back of the van got the fuel line here i've just loosely cable tied it to the air inlet and now i'm just going to run it up and feed it through that hole so i'm going to go into the inside of the van now pull the rest of this through so this is the fuel tank and you can see it's got these two little raised areas on it these are the places where you can put the fuel outlet if you've got the space underneath you can take it from the underside and get all the fuel or if you haven't got the space underneath you can take it from the side so basically we have to fit this on the inside of the container which isn't particularly easy you need a drill bit that is wider than that threaded part i'm using a wood drill bit because it should go through the plastic no problem at all and then you need to drop that into the container and get it to fall through the hole and then that's going to be where you can connect the fuel line i've just tested it against the wall and i can definitely have space underneath so here we go so i'm just going to do a check from the outside that, that fits in it actually screws in um so i need to make that a little bit bigger because that's not going to be easy to screw in from the inside of the container when i can't exactly fit my hands in there So the easiest way to do this is to get some string, or in my case, thick fishing line, feed it into the hole that you just made until eventually it comes out the other end. Also, it's important that you check that the line, that the string or a fishing line or whatever you're using fits through that. I can see it. There we go. So now you should have a piece of string running all the way through the container. And then you just take a piece of string and feed this onto it, making sure you do it in the right direction. You want the screw end going on first and then making sure you don't let go of the fishing line drop that into the container it should eventually line up with the hole that you made in the bottom see it popping through just like that give it a tug pull your fishing line out and obviously making sure you do not let go of that get the bung on or the rubber washer even and then get that nut on all while not letting go <laughs> Now, you're obviously going to want to make sure this is nice and tight, otherwise it's going to leak diesel. You need to be careful not to crush that, but I think what I'm going to do is get a pair of pliers, pinch that, and then use an adjustable spanner to just give that a couple more tightens. So just using another one of these little clips that you get with it, I'm just going to squeeze that, put it onto a piece of hose that I've cut. It's just a shorter piece, it's not going to have to go very far. And I'm just going to feed that on to that. Make sure it's nice and tight right on there. So the next steps, we've got this little device, which is a fuel filter, which needs to go between the tank and the pump. Then we have the pump, which needs to be connected between the fuel filter and the pipe that just came in from the underside of the van. So what I'm gonna do next is get this mounted on the wall. There's holes in here. Uh, so you just drop a washer in and then punch a screw and screw it into your wall. So I'm gonna get that on my wall now and then we'll get this fuel filter in place. I'm afraid I'm running out of daylight, as I always am in winter. Um, something to pay attention to, see how there's not a lot of space there, but I've just had my jerry cam, which I'm gonna to use to fill it um, with its nozzle, and I can quite easily get in at an angle and fill that up. So next I'm gonna take this line, I'm gonna cut it and fit this diesel filter in line with it. Um, I'm probably just gonna cable tie that somewhere along here. So I've just realized the torch I'm using has got like a strobe like. Um, but every time I'm connecting any of the fuel line stuff, I'm using these little clips. Uh, I'm gonna try and rattle through this now because I'm running out of daylight and I'm freezing. But as you can see, I've got the line coming out, goes through the filter. Um, I've just loosely cable tied it. It doesn't need to be tight to the back there. Now this one needs to go into the pump and then this one needs to go into the pump. This end is to the fuel tank. This end is to the heater. It's also important that it gets mounted at between 30 and 45 degrees. So I'm gonna mount it here on this slat and I'm gonna mount it at that angle. Then I'm gonna cut the two tubes to length, connect them just like I have the others. Then that's ready to go and be wired in. The fuel's gonna run out of here through the filter. Then the pump's gonna pump it up, pump it down through the floor, underneath and into the diesel heater. So now we need to wire in and attach the air outlets and of course get some diesel. <laughs> now it's time to talk wiring, and luckily it's extremely easy because each of the sockets that come on this wiring set, they only fit in one place. This big one goes on the diesel heater, 
and I've fed it through to the back of the van. It's a bit of a mess, but I'll tidy it all up. But if you can see there, that's the cables coming through. I've got one of them here, which could only possibly fit on the fuel pump. So I'm just gonna clip that on. For some reason, it comes with a ridiculously short negative cable. Um, presumably they expect you just to ground that to the vehicle chassis, but I'm not, I'm gonna run it to my negative bus bar over here. So I'm gonna extend that cable. You've then got the live cable that runs to the diesel heater and you've got an additional cable which comes around. And this additional cable is actually for this control panel. So again, two more sockets that could only possibly fit each other. So I'm gonna connect them up. So that's that cable coming out into the control panel. I'm probably gonna fit the control panel there. I'm never really gonna need access to it because I've got that uh, remote control, which is brilliant. Um, so all we have left to do now is wire in this red cable the live cable. So it comes with an inline fuse and I've had a look inside and it's a 20 amp fuse. Um, I actually have a whole fuse box here so I'm going to wire it into that. So it's just going to be a case of running this cable along, cutting it to the right size, putting a terminal on it and connecting it into that. And then that'll be it live. And then like I say with this negative, I'm just going to extend that and then run it along and then I'll connect it to the negative of the fuse box. That's it. Once you connect your negative and your positive to your power system. Obviously yours could be different than mine, um, but once that's live, this little control panel will become live and it'll be ready to go. Of course, you're gonna to need to fill your tank with diesel. And of course, the first time you turn it on, this pump is gonna slowly pull the diesel around because it, it kind of goes like doof, 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 doof. So it pulls it in like little sections and then eventually it'll get to the diesel heater and it'll fire up. The very final stage is then using one of these clips putting it onto some of this ducting stuff and then simply attaching it and then tightening the clip up. But I'm all out of time today, so I'm gonna to have to leave it for now, but I'll show you tomorrow once I've neatened everything up and everything's in place and we'll give it a test run. I'm afraid I've actually filled this space with food and stuff now, but as you can see, coming from the diesel here, I've got a short piece that I've connected with Jubilee clips and then it goes on to that splitter and then I need to get another Jubilee clip for that further away one but I've got one of them coming here which blows out into the van uh, I'll probably frame that off eventually and then that blasts through into the garage space to keep it nice and dry and that's it that is how you install a diesel here Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Um, I'm not sure how long it'll be for the next one. Basically, I don't know if you can tell, but the van is finished, really. So for the next video, what I'll do is, it's not gonna be a van tour, it's probably just gonna be a really short video showing you all the little changes that I made. You know, I've just, I've just done some little odd things here or there. Nothing that really needed tutorial, but I'd like to show you what I've achieved and how the van's looking. So yeah, that'll be the next video. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see what my van looks like now that it's finished.